now Tom Thibodeau is going to have to figure out how to go deeper into his rotations because you can't have your starters playing 46, 48 minutes a game throughout an entire series. Like, sure, maybe in a game six like this, maybe in a game five where you have the opportunity to close it out. But all series long, he's going to have to utilize his bench. So is that um, is that one of the reasons you – maybe would bet against New York going forward? Or how do you see this series between the Knicks and Pacers shaking out? Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot closer than what the odds indicate. I think if we're looking for a value side as far as betting the series, uh, you know, I think the value side is on the Pacers. Uh, you know, New York, you know, pretty big favorite to win the series. Um, so I, I think depth is going to be one of the keys for Indiana. Uh, I think when you look at guys like Miles Turner – and some of the players that we've seen step up, like we know like Hal Burton's going to do his job on the perimeter. I don't think the Knicks are going to have an answer for that. But when you have a guy like Miles Turner, who's big, who can kind of pull Hartenstein out, you know, from he can hit three point shots. We saw him doing that against Milwaukee. Now this Knicks defense is going to be, you know, a massive uh, step up as opposed to like the Bucks defense. But I think Indiana matches up pretty well with this Knicks team. Like I think it's going to be a pretty close series, pretty close hard fought series. You know, I think Pacers to win the series. I think they're live as an underdog. I think you can get Pacers plus one and a half games, which is, uh, you know, pretty good money there. I, I think that, uh, you know, pretty good odds with that. I think that that's a, a, a good way to attack it as well. But I think we're looking at six, seven games for sure. And I think Indiana, like Carlisle's a good coach. Indiana has some players. I, I think that, if the Knicks aren't going to be able to get more out of their bench, they're going to, they're going to start to fatigue and they're going to be in a little bit of trouble here because the Indiana is going to put pace on them. Oh yeah. Indiana is going to want to get up and down and run. And that's not what the Knicks want to do. And I mean, that's a perfect recipe for success against this Knicks team. That's coming off of a series like this where they're, they played heavy minutes. It's been extremely physical. Indiana can kind of, run them out of the building, so to speak, early on in this series and tire them out even more. That's a, a huge edge. You also had 20 points from TJ McConnell last night off the bench for Indiana. You had 21 from Obi Toppin. And I know those games are kind of outliers from these players' normal performance, but they're capable of doing that. And the Pacers are going to go a little bit deeper. They're going to go eight players deep um, through their rotation. So having fresh bodies, things like that, is going to give uh, – Indiana a little bit of an edge going forward. The Knicks are heavy favorites to win this series. Minus 275. Pacers are plus 225. Uh, Knicks minus one and a half. That's the uh, the series spread. You can get that minus 140 over at BetMGM. But I think the way you play this, Mark, is how many, how many games is this series going to go? And I think you're right. We're probably looking at another six, seven game series. I don't think either of these teams are going to just run away with this and completely overwhelm the other side. So I would look at betting six games plus 210, seven games plus 230, something like that, because this is going to be another long series with two pretty decent teams right now. Timberwolves walking in to Denver's building. They're going to want to protect home court. I see the Nuggets getting it done in game one. And then this series going uh, six, seven games. Yesterday on the show, we talked about taking the Timberwolves in, in six. And what did we say? Plus 400, something like that. Five to one value. I think that's I think also five a way to you one. I think it was plus 500. It's a pretty good number. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Right game now. One, I think game one, the Wolves could steal. I, I'm, I, I haven't yeah. decided which way I'm going to bet this game, but I think the, the, the Wolves are live in the series. I like when we talked about Wolves in six. If they're going to do that, right, if if you're thinking about targeting Wolves in six and you see that as a likely scenario, then it's real tough to be on Denver game one because now, like, you're, you're taking Denver to cover, right? That's true. So they win game one, then the Wolves have to win four or five if they're going to win it in six, unless you think they can win a game yeah. seven in Denver when it comes down to it, which I wouldn't put it past Anthony Edwards. I would put anything past Anthony Edwards. But you, you have to look at it like that. Like, I think game one might be a good opportunity for the Wolves to steal a game. And then, hey, you know, Denver wakes up in game two. They win game two. Then we go back to Minnesota. And, you know, that's where Minnesota's really going to have to take control of the series when in games three and four. They can win two games there. And then it gets really, um, you know, it gets really interesting. So 
I think game one might be a spot. I know a lot of people in the Nuggets, I think it opened to four. It's at four and a half already. Um, I, I don't know, man. I think the Wolves defense matches up real well with the Nuggets, especially if, you know, Murray's not 100% or if they can kind of, you know, put put some guys on him, take him out of his game. You got to let Jokic do what he's going to do. You're not going to stop him. Just let him do what he's going to do. Take out the other surrounding pieces and make him turn him more into a scorer than a guy who just operates the entire offense. And I think the Wolves can have success. Okay, twist my arm. Uh, you made a case for the <laughs> Wolves there that I kind of I kind of like. I can get on board with that. Um, plus, Wolves money like, line. We can ask uh, Alan Horton this <laughs> next when we talk to him in this next segment. But I want to know the health of Jamal Murray. And I want to know if Chris Finch is going to be on the sidelines for Minnesota, because if, if Murray's banged up at all in this first game, and then I think you could also play the, the angle of if Chris Finch, he just had his surgery for repairing his knee that he blew out, getting basically tackled on the sidelines in that uh, uh, final game against the Suns. And then if he's not on the sidelines, like, does Minnesota kind of rally around their coach? They go out and win this one for him. He could be sitting on the bench. I think they should put him like behind the the announcer's table or the scorer's table. That way he's protected because the, the worry about him being on the sidelines isn't like, can he handle coaching? It's does he get injured again? Someone runs into his knee again. Like that's the problem. So if he's not on the sidelines, I think maybe that does play a little bit into Minnesota's favor in terms of motivation. So we'll ask Alan Horton that, but you kind of just changed my mind here. Uh, it's a terrible handicap to be like, yeah, you're right. I'm flipping spots, but that's where I'm at right now. How do you see Minnesota's offense holding up against the Nuggets? Because like you said, Minnesota's defense is fantastic. They can hold their own on that end of the floor. But where the Wolves have struggled at times this season is in those clutch moments, is down the stretch in games. And we just saw Jamal Murray hit two game winners. That's pretty clutch. Can the Timberwolves do the same thing if these games do come down to the wire? Yeah, down to the wire, Denver, Denver definitely has the edge. But they have the edge over everybody. I mean, over the last five years, they've got the best clutch time record in the NBA. And um, you're right. You saw it in that Lakers series. You, you just can't afford any mistakes. They, cause they don't make any mistakes. They execute offensively. They get stops when they need it um, and they win close games. And so uh, one thing the Wolves did in that Phoenix series was, uh, you know, the old saying of you don't win clutch time games, you avoid them. Good teams avoid them. And the Wolves were able to avoid close games against Phoenix until the final one. But Anthony Edwards stepped up and outdueled Durant and, and Booker in that one. But down the stretch, I think Denver definitely has the advantage. But this Wolves offense has been kind of middle of the pack all season. They've never really gotten on track. They've had some good stretches, but overall, um, they've been a really good shooting team too. Uh, but what's hurt them is they don't collect a lot of offensive rebounds. They don't take care of the basketball very well. Uh, but they've been good getting to the free throw line and good getting to uh, getting their shots because they've got a top 10 effective field goal percentage. Um, and I think, I think their offense is a little underrated. You know, it's, it's tough to look at postseason rankings, but the Wolves did have the number one offense in the postseason um, after their four-game series. And, and, again, that's a warped kind of stat because you're only playing one team. But I, I think the Wolves are capable of more offensively. And the way Anthony Edwards is playing with a ball in his hands a lot, making the right decisions, I think you're going to see the, the, the Nuggets have a tough time with this Wolves offense, or at least maybe not a tough time, but at least that would be a, a, an intriguing matchup just like it is at the other end of the floor. Well, other news out of L.A. today, it looks like, uh, you know, Ham out as the Lakers head coach, and they're going to, you know, rumors going around, they might go after Tyron Lu. a couple other people have been mentioned. Um, what are your thoughts on just the Lakers, what go, what's going on within that organization, and what we could expect from them, um, you know, with this coaching search and looking into next year? Well, much like the Milwaukee Bucks, I think they're going to give it one more uh, season to give it another run. Um, I, I believe that, uh, you know, they know that the window is closing, especially in the, in the LeBron James era. Uh, LeBron will be 40 next year. I don't know how long he can keep up uh, the level of play that, that he's playing. Um, and I think that, you know, they originally wanted to, to hire Ty Lue. Um, however, I think that Ty Lue balked at the, at the contract situation that they wanted to give him. Uh, they may make another run at him. Uh, so, you know, if I had to bet on it, I would say uh, Tyron Lue would be the coach for the Lakers next year. Uh, 
you know, he's already won a championship with LeBron uh, in, in Cleveland. So, you know, I, that, that's what I anticipate. And I think that, uh, you know, the Lakers are still, you know, uh, talent, loaded with talent. They just have to make one more run at it, I think, with a different coach that uh, they'll do well. Uh, whether they can supersede the, the Denver Nuggets and, and uh, OKC Thunder and uh, Minnesota Timberwolves, that's, you know, they have to, they have to get younger. Um, and that's why I believe that, you know, they'll, they'll go one more year with this group. I'll try to add some younger guys with them. Uh, but after this year, if, if nothing happens, I think they're going to break the whole thing up.